Hey guys, I'm Adam. This is Completely Cordless, and today I want to talk about putting a Milwaukee Quick Lock Chuck on your DeWalt 60 volt max stud and joist drill. Alright guys, so here we have it set up. This is what I used. Obviously, uh, you might use something different, but hopefully the process I go through here will help you guys with yours. So you might need a BFH. Sometimes it takes a little persuasion. Okay, I use a DeWalt quick clamp because I have a bench with three quarter inch dog holes to help hold my stud and joist drill down while I'm spinning the chuck. Um, I use a three quarter inch wrench to hold the output shaft from the drill. So when you're loosening the chuck, the shaft stays still. You need a T30 Torx bit for the reverse thread screw that's in that chuck. I used a half inch drive ratchet with a half inch Allen socket. I actually used the key and locked that socket into the chuck when I went to spin the chuck off. And the chuck will spin off uh, normal, so counterclockwise to remove the chuck after the reverse thread screw is out. And of course, you're going to need the Milwaukee Quick Lock Chuck. I will put the part number right here and below in the description. So let's take a look at how this process goes. All right, guys, so I have the drill clamped down to the table. You're going to want that clamp fairly secure. Now, if you don't have a workbench with dog holes and clamps, you can actually put this drill in a bench vise. You can put it in a chain vise. You can lay it down on a concrete step with an overhang right here, so you've got room to spin some tools this way um, and step on it. I mean, whatever suits your fancy, as long as you're not worried about what happens to the exterior finish of your drill. So, I mean, this stud and joist drill, she's uh, put in the work. I'm not overly concerned about how the finish looks, but I happen to have a bench with dog holes, so I'm going to clamp it down. Now, step number one, right there inside that chuck is a T30 reverse thread screw that locks that chuck into place and then the chuck actually threads onto the output shaft like a regular nut so step one is going to be to take your t30 uh, t handle uh, impact bit whatever you've got as long as it fits in the end of the chuck we're going to put it in there we're going to tighten it clockwise to loosen it with a three quarter inch wrench on the output shaft i'm going to hand the camera off here and uh we'll see how this goes all right, guys, so like I said, uh, step number one is going to be take your T30. We're going to put it inside this chuck and a reverse thread screw. So when you find it, it's going to spin that way. But without your three-quarter wrench, this output shaft is just going to spin. Okay. So what you want to do is get that thing just right, like this, so that your wrench is hitting your bench or your steps or your vise or whatever you got. Okay. We're going to put this just like that. Grab our BFH, give it a little pop. Okay, there it is, just like that. Okay, you can also do that with an impact socket, a uh, bit adapter, whatever you've got there. A little bit of Loctite on it is your T30 reverse thread screw. We're going to save that because you need it for your other chuck. Okay, step two is going to be to chuck the half inch Allen and the half inch drive ratchet into the existing chuck. You want that really tight. because This one is going to be the stubborn one, especially if you have owned this drill for a while and used it. Okay, We're going to get this over here. Okay, Now, I'm going to hold this wrench. If it spins too far, it slides itself off. Okay, you can also step on this wrench, you can put another clamp on this wrench, whatever you want to do, but you're going to hit this handle up here with your hammer to loosen this chuck off of the output shaft.
Oh, there she went. Maybe. Okay. The worst part is I've had this off already. That's how difficult that can be to remove. I've seen guys use impacts. I've seen a lot of them struggle with it. Okay. There it goes. Just like that. Okay, before you get it all the way off, do yourself a favor. Loosen your keyed chuck. There it goes. Okay, there she is. And if we look right here, get a good shot of that. There's your output shaft. Okay, there's where your uh, reverse thread screw goes to lock it on. So now we're going to take our quick lock chuck. We're going to thread it on just like the one we took off. Just like that. Okay, now. If you want to tighten this quick lock chuck down before you put the reverse thread screw in, instead of just letting it kind of tighten itself, what you can do is take a 7 sixteenths, uh, 7 sixteenths quick lock attachment like this one, chuck it in here, okay? And then if you pull this chuck forward, this is actually a 5 8 right here. So you can put a 5 8 wrench on that and use it to spin this way to tighten that on if you want to. I haven't yet, haven't had any problems. Um, but again, when you go to remove this, if you ever go to take this chuck off, what I've always done is chucked in that 7 16 and used a 5 8 wrench across these flats right here to remove this chuck. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You can't chuck in a half inch Allen and 7 16 Allen's are really hard to come by. Okay, so now this is in, ready to go. We're going to take our T30 and T30 reverse thread screw. We're going to give it the old lefty tidy. Okay, and I'm going to snug this by hand. You don't want to hit it with a hammer. It'll get tight, trust me. And there she is. Just like that. You got a 7 16 quick lock on your DeWalt 60 volt max stud and joist drill.